And Mr. Jenkins, when you said uh, Ms. Hurd got sick, do you recall what her symptoms were? Yes, she was throwing up. Mr. Jenkins, did you see any injuries of any kind on Ms. Hurd April 22nd, 2016? No injuries. I'll sustain you, so yes. What about the rest of that weekend, Mr. Jenkins? Any injuries that you saw? No injuries. Still with us are two guest legal analysts in studio, former DOG, DOJ rather, senior attorney. And we have Kirk Nurmi, former criminal defense attorney representing Jody Arias with us as well. All right, Tammy, tell me this. Um, who cares? How is the fact that maybe Amber Heard defecated in the bed of Johnny Depp relevant to a defamation claim? You know, the fact that she may have pooped in his bed is very relevant because of this op-ed. And the op-ed is that Johnny Depp is saying that her saying she's a survivor of domestic violence ruined his career and prevented him from making money, which is why he's suing her for the $50 million. Her pooping in his bed kind of negates that because that is something disgusting. That is something that someone would do to an individual that is abusive to that individual. So I do believe that Johnny Depp's team really wants that in so that they can show that it's not Johnny Depp that was being abusive towards her. She, in fact, was the one being abusive towards Johnny Depp. And I know we've all talked about the authenticity of Johnny Depp when he testified. And Kirk, take with that, he said that he thought she did it. She tried to blame it on the dog. So you have his testimony. But now you have another witness who says, oh, yeah, she admitted she did it. So to me, that means it's a pretty good, clear and convincing fact that that jury could find at this point. Yeah, you're right, Ashley, and I think following on what Tammy just said, it's the kind of thing, it's the kind of act, this surprise, as we're going to call it here today, is the kind of thing that's going to stick in jurors' mind. I mean, if you go through social media, this surprise has been trending on Twitter for several days straight because it's so grotesque, it's so juvenile, and it's so vile that, you know, it's going to stick in those jurors' mind. That act, along with all the others that I think could be wrapped up under the banner of course of control, the taping of him, the threats against him, and even the article itself claiming to be a victim of domestic violence is a bit of course of control. So I think we put all those elements together and it does not look good for Miss Heard with this surprise driving that train, if you will. Right, I agree. She doesn't look good. A lot of viewers don't like Amber Heard. Well, let's listen to some more testimony together because this may add fuel to that fire and this is the head of the ACLU talking about her payments that were to be made to the ACLU. Let's listen. How much has Ms. Heard paid directly to the ACLU? Um, I, that would be $350,000 paid directly. How much has been paid indirectly and credited to Ms. Heard? Um, there was $100,000, um, which was a check from Johnny Depp. There was a $500,000 $500, payment from a donor advised fund at Vanguard. And then there was a $350,000 payment that appears to be from a donor advised fund at Fidelity making it total $1.2 million. And when you speak of credit to, credited toward Amber Heard, to what are you referring? Um, so, and I think I might have done the math wrong. Let me just do the math in my head. Is 700, 800 plus the five. I think 1.3 is the, is the amount. Um, so um, we received a check from um, for the for the the one hundred thousand dollar payment, we received a check from Johnny Depp's um, representatives, and it was said to be um, a payment in connection with um, on behalf of Amber Heard. Um, she confirmed that the five hundred thousand dollar payment um, from Vanguard Charitable. Um, she confirmed was a payment in connect on, on her behalf and the $350,000 payment um, as well. When you say credited toward uh, her, what does that mean? 
Well, um, she had, um, w when we initially um, uh, had contact with Amber Heard in 2016, she indicated her desire to pay $3.5 million to the ACLU. And that was, and, and these were amounts that were in relation to that, um, her having expressed that that's what she wanted to pay to the ACLU. So it's fair to say that she has not donated $3.5 million as of today to the ACLU, true? That's true. Right. All right, let's add a couple of additional facts not in that clip. And those facts are, number one, she donated the entirety of her divorce settlement agreement, $7 million to two different organizations. Three, well, at least she said she would. Then there was the 3.5 that she said she would donate to the ACLU. And this testimony proves she didn't do that. And in addition to that, one of the payments allegedly came from Elon Musk. And we know another payment came from Johnny Depp. Let me start with you, Tammy. What does this do for Amber Heard's credibility, believability, et cetera? You know, it does a number of things. Number one, it seems as if she doesn't um, adhere to her obligations. And it kind of attacks her credibility, um, which helps Johnny Depp's legal team, having this um, ACLU attorney testify to the fact that he did not receive the payment that she um, promised to make, uh, which was half of her divorce settlement. But at the same time, ACLU assisted her in writing that op-ed article. So it kind of goes to, well, what was ACLU getting out of it? And what was Amber Heard getting out of this op-ed that is the main issue of this trial in the first place? That op-ed saying that she was a survivor of domestic violence and Johnny Depp saying that he's lost out on a lot of money because of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think the ACLU clearly was getting fundraising out of participating in this op-ed. Kirk, what are your thoughts about uh, how this affects Amber Heard's case and what she may have to say on the stand to redeem herself? Well, you know, that's going to be hard because before she's even taken the stand, she's been branded a liar, not just by Johnny Depp, but by objective witnesses, right? We heard from the police officers going back to them seeing no evidence of domestic violence. We have the ACLU now saying she did not com comport with her promises to them. And there are several other instances. And then you combine that with everything else we've seen. And, you know, go, Johnny, go tell them that you're a victim of domestic violence. Nobody's going to believe you, that kind of course of control. It really gets to the point where she is going to have a tough time rebuilding, rebuilding her credibility because she's going up on that witness stand with everybody believing that she is probably going to lie and that she has a history of it. And that's a tough hill to climb for Miss Heard. And we know that in the UK, Johnny Depp lost the lawsuit. And some argue kind of by a landslide in terms of what the judge had to say about that lawsuit. But here it seems like he's ahead in the game. Let's listen to some details, though, of the divorce settlement agreement to also bring that into this discussion. When Ms. Heard began the negotiations, she was asking for approximately $4 million. That Objection balance then was increased. Hearsay, she, lack of foundation, hearsay. These are requests made by Ms. Heard and her counsel in, in, a, in a conversation, in communications. Here, you, they, you want to approach oh, for a minute. Thank you. But on behalf of Mr. Depp and the negotiation, what was your understanding of what Ms. Heard was looking for? She initially was looking for a consideration of $4 million, but her demand continually increased. It went from $4 million to $5 million. Then it went from $5 million to $5.5 million. Then it went to $7 million. And then it was $7 million, and she required, demanded, that Mr. Depp also pay $500,000 to her attorneys. Then, after that consideration, she also said that all the community liabilities that were accumulated objection, during the Your course Honor. of the marriage, which approximated the Sorry, there's an million. objection, sir. Whenever there's an objection, I'm sorry. If you can't hear it, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay? Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, no problem, this sir. This just goes into his allegations of what she said, which Your Honor just instructed, uh, sustain the objection on that. He has no foundation to suggest that. No knowledge of that. Your, Your Honor, I, I, I understand that. I, I asked his understanding. All right, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. May I continue? 
she'll tell you yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. He learns very well. Um, so the next demand was that all of the community liabilities that were unresolved, okay. approximately $13.5 million, that Mr. Depp had to pay those liabilities in its entirety. So at that point, she was demanding $14,250,000 of consideration, and then it got worse. The next demand was that all of this consideration be paid to her free of taxation. This man knows his numbers, and he is the business manager for Johnny Depp. But when you listen to that kind of testimony, continuing to demand more and more and more and getting up to the high 14 millions, and I don't want to have to pay taxes. Last thoughts about this, this how it affects Amber Heard. You know, we talk about the attorneys for Johnny Depp and their lack of trial experience. Yes, they may not be the best litigators, but strategically, the witnesses that they've brought forward are good. These are good witnesses to put forward because it helps Johnny Depp and it hurts Amber Heard. And I know that we're expected to hear from her first. But as I stated yesterday, I do think that, like a concert, she should not testify first. She should have her opening acts and then she can testify as the main attraction because of the fact she has to be uh, viewed as credible, but she needs an objective witness to state to her credibility. All right, great points. Tammy, Kirk, last thoughts about how this affects Amber Heard. It does look good, right? It looks like it's consistent with the borderline diagnosis of my needs need to be met first before anyone else's and anyone's expense. So it really helps fill in the picture that the psychologist testified to earlier. And it looks like she is someone who's trying to advance her star based on a relationship with Johnny Depp and even based on these claims because we look at her the courthouse in the UK after after winning that case she was really trying to cast herself as a poster board or a poster child for the victim of domestic violence but what we're seeing here in this trial is that she's anything but Fascinating. I appreciate you guys have such strong opinions and knowledge and information about this case that I welcome that during this show. Also coming up, we're going to keep talking because the events of the day where Johnny Depp lost a fingertip has also been a consistent topic of this trial. So when we come back, we will hear from Depp's bodyguard who was there the day that Depp's finger got severed. Download RoboKiller today. It's not fair. It's not right what ha what she did and what happened.